Hello Wonder Kids, it's FIFA Expert, and today we're back with another episode of the Napoli Career Mode. It's taken a lot longer than I expected to produce this episode, and for that I do apologize, but I'm just happy that I'm able to get it out right now. This will be a very short episode, it's only going to be about 9 minutes, but hopefully it'll still be entertaining enough for you guys. And if I can release this one as soon as I think I can, then the next episode should be out either the next day or today on the same day. But moving on, today's episode is going to be seeming like it's going to be very much an interesting episode. Today we're just going to be closing off the January transfer window. I did decide to make one more signing in the window, signing the striker that was rumored with us, that is Lucas from Wolfsburg. And uh, that would be our last piece of transfer business uh, for the window. Now, of course, in this episode, I'm just going to be simulating, uh, simulating a lot of games, just like this one against Cagliari. And when I do play games, I'm only going to be showing goals because it's taken me far too long to release this episode. And I just want to progress past the season as soon as possible. Now, one more piece of transfer business in this window for Napoli is going to be the sale of Kalidu Kulabali. He has expressed his concerns and he has expressed his feelings on wanting to leave the club. So I just decided to accept that contract, uh, not contract, that offer from Piemonte Calcio, despite them being our rivals, because he's just unhappy at the club. He's even, you know, not attending training sessions. So after uh, the Fiorentina game, we did finally come to an agreement. And after the Hellas Verona game, which was a 1-1 draw, unfortunately, Kalidu Kulebali was indeed sold to Piemonte Calcio. He does make himself public enemy number one, but I feel like it was just the best thing to do for us and Koulibaly. He was unhappy at the club and to have our captain be an unhappy player is just going to bring down the team morale. Now of course if you're going to sell a player as good as Koulibaly you might have to find someone to just try to at least plug up the hole he's left behind. Lucas Hernandez isn't quite a replacement but he could still be someone who could be quite useful for us. Simulated against AC Milan because it was a Coppa Italia game. We still moved on, which I'm very happy with, but then we move on to Serie A, similarly against Cagliari. We pick up a nice and easy 4-0 win. And now here comes the first played match of the game, which is going to be against Roma FC. They are definitely a team that we're very much used to playing against, and uh, I feel like I think I feel like that uh, Napoli could probably grab a huge win here. If not huge, at least uh, three points. Three points is the minimum expectation from this match. But Roma are the ones to kick us off. We are indeed the first team to be able to grab a goal. It was a nice goal to be honest. And Senior ran it down, beating his marker, gave Oshiman a beautiful pass. And Oshiman just laid it off to Irving Lozano for an easy finish. And just like that, we took the lead in this game very early on in the match. Seven minutes in, Irving Lozano, thanks to Oshiman and a bit of Insigne action was able to give us the 1-0 lead against Roma. Unfortunately, this lead wouldn't last that long, however, as in the 31st minute, Roma would take in a bit of an interesting play here to play the ball into the box and somehow get the striker a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with the font. And uh, Zaniolo was able to finish that nice and easy. However, a cross in from Mario Rui to Victor Oshimhen would make sure that uh, we do grab the lead almost immediately after losing it. We move on to another Roma FC goal though and this one was just another goal of just top class quality. It's an amazing strike and I honestly can't be blaming Alban Lafont for not saving that one. It's just a really nice, really well hit shot. Had tons of power in it. But then later on in the match we did we were able to get a penalty thanks to a Tammy Abraham handball. The handball rule has definitely been quite controversial in this career mode. But we do take our chances as they come and now it's up to Lorenzo Insigne to see if he can put us into the lead once more. And that is exactly what he is able to do. Just like that, Napoli is back in the lead with a 3-2 scoreline. We didn't stop there however because we were noticing a pattern in this game that every time we scored a goal, Roma would have to score a goal as well, so that's why Irving Lozano decided to take things into his own hands, put in an amazing run and to just give us a cushion so that even if Roma does score again, they will still have to score another goal if they're going to deter our three points today. Was deter the right word to use there? I'm not 100% sure, but we're on another attack. It's a great pass for Victor Oshimhen. He's able to beat a center back. He gets himself in a one on one opportunity with Rui Patrizio, and he's not going to miss. And just like that, Napoli leads the game 
5-2. It seems like a dominant performance. You could probably say it is, but every performance kind of counts the same if it's a win. We're, we're getting three points at the end of the day anyways. And I think after that, this is how the match ended. A nice and simple 5-2 win against Roma just to put us closer to the top of the table. I think this does keep us in second place because our gap between us and first place is a, is a lot. It's a lot of points. But I think if we keep winning, we're definitely going to reduce the gap. Moving on from the Roma game is going to be a match against Piemonte Calcio, which will probably be the last game of the episode, but not the first leg of the Coppa Italia. It will be the second leg. We do simulate the first leg. And we do grab a 2-2 win, which means that we have all to play for in the second leg. I do keep simulating the Serie A games because, again, I just want to get past this season just as fast as possible. The storyline I am working on for season two is just, uh, I want to see how it does. You know, I'm really excited to put it out there. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy the storyline for season two. But before we get there, we actually have to finish the season. Hence why I'm simulating so many games right now. We did grab a win and we did grab a loss, but we also simulated in the Europa League and we ended up winning against Besiktas in both legs, although the second leg was definitely much closer than the first leg. And we do simulate against Spezia as well. As you can see on the table, we're currently fourth place. I was kind of wrong about being second or whatever, but I think if we can keep winning, then I think we'll be back in second place. Now it is time for the main event of this episode, the match against our bitter rivals Piemonte Calcio. It doesn't seem like Kalidu Koulibaly is going to be making an appearance. It's kind of strange that he only appears when I want to actually play the game. And he... Uh, not, not that. He only appears when I'm simulating. But when I'm not simulating, he doesn't want to appear. But of course, we are going to move into the game. And uh, we do jump into a Lucas goal. He just basically just steals it from Chesney. Just a bit of an awkward moment there for Chesney. A fraudulent moment, you could say. But hey... All goals count the same and we're not really going to complain that much. But of course, Piemonte Calcio weren't just going to let that slide. Zakaria was sent through some way somehow, beating a few defenders. And uh, the ball ended up going to Vlahovic, who was able to just tap it in due to a nice and easy cutback. Honestly, good play from Piemonte. However, Lucas decided to uh, steal one more goal from the defense. And uh, again, you know, you just you really can't complain. Sure, it's... Uh, it's an awkward goal, if you could say. It's an awkward goal to score, but again, you just really can't complain because all goals count the same, and the win is what matters. Of course, Piemonte Calcio would go on the attack again. I do feel like Alban Lafon should have saved that one. I mean, he should be using his height to his advantage, shouldn't really be diving under the ball like that. Just shows how uh, broken this game really is. But of course, us as Napoli, we would also answer back, you know, Thiago going on a bit of a solo run into the box. He's able to finish it nice and easy. He's been a, definitely been a really good signing for us this season. And in the 90th minute, one more piece of play from Piemonte Calcio will lead to them scoring a goal to equalize in the 90th minute. I honestly thought we were going to go to extra time, but as you will see, we don't actually go to extra time. Because we scored three away goals at the Piemonte Calcio home ground, we are actually going to be moving on through away goals. So that Thiago goal was a lot more important than it than we originally thought. But with this match, you know, coming to an end, this will also be the end of the episode. I hope you did enjoy this episode. If you did, please do leave a like, please subscribe, and join the Discord server too. But of course, I am not really forcing you to do any of that. If you don't want to do any of that, then I only ask you either watch another video or wait for the next episode. But other than that, I guess I will see you all later. Enjoy the rest of your day or night.